on this edition of PGTV News. With cases of the coronavirus continuing to grow not only in Florida, but here in Polk County, experts warn of fraud surrounding the pandemic. We have steps on how to protect yourself and information on how the virus is affecting the job market. That's coming up. It's time to fill out your census survey. What if you're living in a place that you don't normally live? We have the information you need to correctly fill out your documents. That's ahead on PGTV News. Welcome to PGTV News. I'm Stephen Barnes. And I'm Tina Mann. A warning from federal law enforcement, be on the lookout for scams related to the coronavirus. Officials say that scammers are preying on older people's fears by selling fake tests for the coronavirus to Medicare recipients. The Health and Human Services Inspector General's office said it's seeing marketing schemes rapidly pivot to offering tests for COVID-19 and senior care packages with hand sanitizer or even tout a vaccine, which doesn't exist. Some marketers falsely claim that President Donald Trump has ordered that seniors get tested. Low-income Medicaid recipients are also being targeted. The sales pitches are coming via telemarketing calls, robocalls, social media posts, emails, and even door-to-door -door visits. As legitimate businesses close their doors and send workers home to comply with social distancing measures, fraud operators have ramped up recruiting for their call centers. For seniors, the consequences can be long-term. Healthcare fraud is one of the most prevalent forms of identity theft. Once a person's Medicare information is in the hands of fraudsters, it can be used repeatedly to bill for unwanted goods and services. That can create problems if a Medicare enrollee ever does need them. Federal and state law enforcement officials have set up a working group to share information on the quickly evolving scams and route leads to the agencies best equipped to investigate. The phone number for the HHS Inspector General's hotline is 800-HHS-TIPS and the National Center for Disaster Fraud hotline is at 866-720-5721. For most people, the coronavirus causes only mild or moderate symptoms such as fever and cough. For some, especially older adults and people with existing health problems, it can cause more severe illness including pneumonia. It's so frustrating that not only are we having to deal with widespread panic and all yeah. the anxieties related to that, but people are actually taking advantage of the situation. Yeah, it never fails that um, people, people use these emergency situations to trick people. I mean, that's, it never fails. It always happens whether it's a hurricane, whether it's, um, you know, storms coming through, whatever it might be, there's always people looking to be opportunistic on, you know, unsuspecting folks. So keep an eye out on your elders, make sure that they have this information, mm -hmm. you know. And the biggest thing is to get your information from legitimate places, legitimate news sources. Don't trust what you read on social media. Ever. Go to the legitimate news outlets and find out the real information. Don't be don't be one of uh, the victims of these of these scammers. Right, and there's so many numbers you can call to even the sheriff's office. If you call them, they will tell you whether something's legitimate yep. or not. They'll take the time to look into something for you and make sure it's safe before you proceed. Yeah, absolutely. Earlier this month, Governor Ron DeSantis closed all Florida schools, including the ones here in Polk County, until at least April 15th. Even though the schools are closed starting March 30th until schools reopen, Polk County Public Schools will offer free breakfast and lunches at the locations on your screen from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Children must be present to receive a meal and the meal must be taken off site. Children may pick up a meal at any of the locations where the meals are offered. They do not have to attend the school at that location. Schools will have a drive up process in place so no one will have to exit their vehicles. For those who do not have a vehicle, a walk-up section will be created. A uniformed law enforcement officer and school safety guardian will be assigned to each school serving as a meal distribution site. District officials say the officer and guardian present, presence will help facilitate a safe and orderly atmosphere during the school closures. For more information, visit polkschoolsfl.com slash lunch locations. 
This is a great idea. I think um, you know a lot of families depended on those meals being provided for their children right. during the day, especially during the school year. Um, you know, so so continuing to provide those meals. Uh, I mean, the schools have already purchased the food. Right. It's already there. So, and it's it's really important because one of the biggest fears in closing the schools was the amount of children who depend on that and sometimes that's their only meal so yeah. this is a great service well and it's important to remember that this is they're doing it in a in a manner in a way that is not going to put anybody in danger you know curbside delivery of the of the food to the vehicles um, i mean if that doesn't say customer service i don't know what does i know jacqueline bird herself <laughs> was out there handing out meals yeah. before spring break Last week, we showed you some library resources available to help keep your kids entertained and educated. Jennifer Kovac, Outreach Services Librarian with the Polk County Library Cooperative, has a few more options to keep your kids occupied during this time. The National Center for Families Learning is an excellent website to go to. It's one of my go-to resources. Um, one, there are two things I wanted to highlight on that website um, that I have found very helpful. Um, one is called 30 Days of Families Learning Together. And it is a calendar broken down by 30 days and it gives you hands-on activities to do with your child, things that you can do together to engage them, keep them learning, um, keep them involved, and um, it really inspires imagination and play. And um, the other one that I found very helpful is called Wonderopolis, and also found through the National Center for Families Learning. Um, I actually used this one with my son yesterday, and um, each day they focus on one of the wonders of our world. Um, and they provide um, video tutorials and different exercises and activities that children can do to better understand the world that they live. Um, they also compile the series of wonders, questions that have been generated by children, our youth today, on things that they want to learn about. And then they customize these learning videos and offer tips from the experts on these different wonders of the world. Um, so I, I found it highly entertaining. Um, my son, the two segments that he did yesterday is he learned how what's involved with purifying water. And it's just like a little like three to five minute video snippet but very entertaining and animated. And then the other thing, he's really into video games, so he learned what's involved with becoming a video gamer. And so, um, so they offer all different kinds of lessons and exercises um, that would interest all different children and their interests. So I found that those, those two resources were great uh, through the National Center for Families Learning. So many of us are familiar with Scholastic Books. Um, so the same company, um, they are offering for free, um, as long as schools are out for the next couple months, um, it's called Scholastic's Free Learn at Home program. Um, and I'll provide all of these links to the websites that you can post as well. But um, I, I, um, I haven't put this one to use yet, but I did explore it. And I think it's going to be excellent because what they provide is they have it set up um, on a daily schedule. And each day you're provided a lesson plan, kind of like when you're in school. And you have four different segments of learning. Uh, very similar to what you would see in school with math and science and uh, language arts, those kinds of things. And then you're given these little videos that the children go through. You may have a passage they have to read, and then you will have an exercise that they have to do. So they really have it well organized and planned, um, providing these lesson plans for you that you can you know, put to use and keep your child engaged and entertained and learning something. Some terrific ideas there. There are, and as a parent, I appreciate all of them because my kids are getting really bored. Yeah. There's only so much electronics they can do, but we're making more of an effort to make sure we spend time out in the yard and actually, you know, doing mm. some things outside as well. Well, and you know, the the interesting thing is, is that, 
you know, this whole kind of social distancing thing, it's changing our lives. Mm -hmm. And it means that we're gonna have to come up with creative ways to do other things. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to reinvent the wheel. It just means that you might have to, you know, mm -hmm. try something a little bit different than what you would normally do. But for those of us who are Generation X or who lived through the lack of technology, this is kind of going back to our childhood. It's playing more outside, <laughs> playing more board games, somewhere. right, doing things yeah. as a family as opposed to just staying on electronics. So yep. there's some positives in it. As the novel coronavirus outbreak continues, the state Supreme Court has extended its suspension on jury trials and grand jury proceedings into mid-April. And Stacy Butterfield, Polk County's clerk of the circuit court and comptroller, has closed those offices to the public indefinitely. As a result, residents in Polk County won't be able to apply for passports or marriage license until the suspension is lifted, according to the clerk's press release. The release also stated that where marriage licenses are concerned, the clerk's office will consider emergency situations as warranted. Circuit Judge Ellen Masters, Chief Judge of the Three County Tenth Judicial Circuit, has issued an order limiting courtroom proceedings to those that are essential, such as first appearance hearings following an arrest and domestic violence hearings. Butterfield said her office will continue to process court matters, but won't be seeing walk-in customers. She said, I am doing everything possible to balance the accessibility of the clerk's services and doing our part to practice the social distancing requirements adopted by public health authorities. I realize these changes cause inconvenience to our customers, but they are necessary steps for the health and safety of the community and our employees. Many clerk services will be available by telephone or online, including, but not limited to, the payment of traffic tickets, the filing of court documents, recording mortgages, deeds, and other official records, and viewing court records. I think it's really important to note that right now, Polk County is still open for business. We may have some of the buildings shut down for safety caution, uh, for you know safety precautions, but Polk County is still open for business. Right, but it's important to know that people need to have patience mm -hmm. and give people extra time because we are all working to adapt to a completely new norm, to a completely new set of standards on equipment that doesn't always run as quickly as 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 people are actually having to remote connect right. in, et cetera. So I, I believe uh, County Manager Bill Beasley had stated earlier this week that we have. Um, over 300 employees now that are telecommuting or working full time right. from home um, as part of this social distancing uh, protocol. So, um, yeah, there's going to be less people on site uh, to handle some of that traffic. Best. Yep. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection is shutting the state's 175 parks, including the four in Polk County, to reduce the potential spreading of the coronavirus. The move came at the direction of Governor Ron DeSantis to uphold recent social distancing guidelines issued by the Centers for Disease Control. All state parks will be closed indefinitely beginning March 23rd. Previously, the agency attempted to limit hours to reduce the number of visitors. However, people who were taking advantage of being away from work and the warm weather continued to flock to the parks for fishing and other recreation. We appreciate the public's cooperation and understanding as we work to prioritize the welfare of our communities and staff, the agency said in a media release. We look forward to welcoming you again to our award-winning state parks as soon as possible. And of course, this is also in conjunction with the county closing their state, uh, yeah, their state parks, the, the county parks, um, which are terrific resources. We have wonderful parks here, but again, the concern for people's health is above you know, right. keeping those places open. And it's unfortunate because, you know, one of the best ways to stay healthy is to actually get fresh air and exercise and things like that. But people might have to do that in their own yards or, or things like that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, people had continued to go to the beach in large groups and yeah. weren't following any of the social distancing rules. So. Yeah, and I think that was the key was we were hoping we would be able to keep those parks open and things like that. and folks would stay away from each other, but you've still got people congregating in large parking lots and things like that just right. to get into the park. So um, 
you know, for people's safety, you know, safety we've got to cut things one. back. While many jobs are on hold due to the coronavirus, one industry is looking to expand during this time, supermarkets. Publix and Walmart are hiring more people at their stores and warehouses, including right here in Florida. Walmart, in particular, is looking to hire 150,000 people with almost 10,000 of those in Florida. They've also reduced application processing time down to a day and are offering a $250 bonus to employees who refer new hires. The new hire will receive the same bonus. Industry analysts say that supermarkets were already experiencing labor shortages before the outbreak. Since the COVID-19 outbreak, sales have increased 50 to 80% at many supermarkets. Companies don't just need employees to staff the store, but cleaning crews to help disinfect around the clock. Many of the positions will be temporary, but with the labor shortage, some positions may become permanent. This is definitely a good thing because there are a lot of people who are depending on their income in especially the hospitality industry that have no means to get yeah. by. So Aldi, Publix, Walmart, there's so many people, who, even Amazon are mm -hmm. just ramping up hiring and saying, please apply. Yeah. So a lot of these displaced people have somewhere to go. Well, and it's interesting to see how the, the job market is kind of shifting from certain industries to other industries as we try to tackle some of this new reality that we're living in. And this is a perfect example, like you said, some of those hospitality industries, they're not gonna have visitors. They're not right. gonna have, you know, some of the other industries that require, um, you know, interaction, they're shutting down. Mm -hmm. um, but by the same hand, some of these other places like warehousing, um, people are gonna be ordering everything online now. So right. there's gonna be a massive amount of job opportunities in, in warehousing and supermarket distribution, things like that. So. Even the 2020 Olympics have been impacted by the coronavirus, with officials saying that the worldwide competition will be postponed, possibly until next year. International Olympic Committee member Dick Pound announced that the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games will be delayed. The specifics will be worked out over the next few weeks. Several countries' Olympic committees, including Canada, Australia, Germany, Brazil, and Norway, said they would not send athletic delegations to the Games unless the competition was postponed. This will be the first time the Olympics have been suspended, though they have been canceled previously during periods of war. The 1916 Summer Games were canceled because of World War I, as were the Summer and Winter Games in 1940 and 1944 due to World War II. Boycotts also caused serious complications for the Games in 1976, 1980, and 1984, but in each case, the event itself went on as scheduled. So it's the first time in my history that the Olympic Games were canceled, so mm. this is definitely something that's once in a lifetime for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's unprecedented because clearly it's happened before, but it's certainly a rare occasion when there's something large enough to impact a global event like the Olympics. I mean, typically something might affect one country or another country, but rarely does it affect enough to cancel the Olympics. So you can really kind of grasp the, the size and the scope of this global pandemic. Right, but I mean, imagine how many people actually attend the Olympics. I mean, it, it fills entire major cities. So mm -hmm. it would be completely socially irresponsible to hold them and have a mass breakout because yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, you should have received your census documents by now. However, if you are a student whose school has been closed or you have relocated due to the coronavirus, you'll need more information before you fill out your survey. Hi, I'm Virginia and I work at the U.S. Census Bureau. You may have heard about the 2020 census, the once a decade count of everyone living in the United States and that includes all college and university students too. We wanna to make sure you're counted in the right place, no matter where you physically are, even if you are temporarily living somewhere else. A lot of your schools may have closed down for the next few weeks or even for the rest of the semester, and you may have returned home to families or are living with relatives or friends right now. Here's the official guidance. Students that normally live at school should be counted at school. Even if you are temporarily living somewhere else, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. First, if you normally live in a dorm or in college-owned Greek housing, don't worry. 
your college is already working with us to count you. That means you don't need to do anything and you're off the hook. But if you normally live in an apartment or a house alone or with roommates or others, this is where you come in. You should receive an invitation in the mail to respond to the census. And you can respond in three ways, online, by phone, or by mail. Whatever method you choose, make sure you use your normal address where you usually live while you're in school. You should also include everyone else who normally lives there too. That means you'll be asked about your roommate's birthdays, how they wanna identify their race, etc. But if you don't know that information or can't verify whether your roommate has already responded for your home, please respond for the entire household. We have tools to unduplicate your responses and we'd rather eliminate duplicates than miss you or your roommates entirely. If you aren't around right now to get your mail, you can still respond to the 2020 census online at 2020census.gov. One more thing, if you usually live with your parents during the school year, they should include you when they respond to the census. The reason we want to make sure you're counted where you normally live is because those responses impact how billions of dollars in federal funding will be distributed to your school's community for services that affect you, like school safety, mental health services, and Pell Grants. Responding to the 2020 census is so important, and we want it to be easy, even when everything else gets difficult. Please share this message with your friends and make sure that you and everyone you know is counted in the census. It's another unprecedented change, but yeah. the good thing about the census is that if you have any questions at all, like if you're confused about it, even if you didn't understand all that information or you just need some input, you can always call them or they have people available online that can help you as well. Yeah, yeah, it's. Um it's kind of a play it by ear situation here, isn't it? Right. Information's kind of changing regularly, so it can be really confusing, especially for some of these things like the census and stuff where we, you had a pretty good idea how things were gonna work and now things are up in the air, but um, like you said, there's always places to go for help and more information. And regardless, that census remains essential mm -hmm. because in times like these where they're considering distributing additional federal aid, yep. if we don't have a proper count of how many people are here in Polk County, they can't send an accurate amount That's of That's a great point to make, yep. Well, thanks for watching PGTV News. Keep it right here because the board review is coming up. Welcome to the Board Review with news about your county government. I'm your host, Tricia Pichette. Today you'll learn about county commission actions from the March 17, 2020 board meeting. The board approved a resolution Tuesday morning that officially declares a state of local emergency relating to the COVID-19 pandemic. County Manager Bill Beasley signed the declaration March 16, but it required approval of the board at its next meeting. This resolution will need to be extended multiple times by the board, since the duration of this event is expected to continue for a while. This measure allows the county manager to use all county resources to address the emergency and waives many of the procedures and formalities that the county is normally required to follow for procurement. An interlocal agreement with the City of Auburndale was approved Tuesday for use of Tourism Development Tax Funding, the engineering design and permitting phase of the Lake Myrtle Sports Complex Multipurpose Stadium. The Board approved the agreement with the Florida Division of Emergency Management for the Standby Power Improvements Phase 2 project. Here to talk more about the project is Polk County Utilities Director Tamara Richardson. Uh, we brought today to the, for board approval, uh, a contract with the Florida Department of Emergency Management. Um, during Hurricane Irma, due to the widespread power outages, uh, the county decided to add additional generators to supply power to lift stations. Lift stations um, pump, collect all the gravity sewage and pump it to the treatment plant. So once, with, when power was out, we had to take uh, portable generators or they have standby emergency generators at each one to continue that power supply to continue the sewage moving to where it needs to go. Um, so we have added some uh, more permanent generators to 23 different lift stations that we identified as being critical either due to their size by the, and the flow or doing, due to um, an environmentally sensitive area say on the edge of a lake. 
So um, we, this is, we've had 23. Now this is, we've brought in six different contracts. This is contract number five, and this includes 22 of those lift stations have been approved now. The fifth, the last one is pending. It's where we fully expect it to go through. It's just um, a little bit more complicated project. So we fully intend to, we fully expect to have that one. Well, the, count, the county commissioner uh, just approved the contract, so we're gonna move forward with the next group of lift stations in the southwest portion of the county. The board approved a property insurance renewal with Arthur J. Gallagher for about $1.84 million, which is for the period lasting from April 1st through March 31st, 2021. The Real Estate Services Administrator was on hand to discuss this next measure, which is about the purchase of property in conjunction with Lakeland, Bartow, and Polk County Utilities Potable Water Inconnect Interconnect Project. We had one item on for regular uh, consideration by the board this morning, which was the purchase of a two acre site on the north side of County Road 548, just west of US 98. Uh, the two acre site would be utilized for a uh, potable water or drinking water uh, interconnect uh, that will uh, be between Polk County's utility services and along with the city of Lakeland utility. And possibly at a future time, the city of Bartow will also be joined in there. That site will allow us to construct uh, the piping infrastructure needed for the interconnect, which would allow the city or the county or uh, the city of Bartow in the future to utilize water from the other district or from the other municipalities or county. Uh, it'll also allow us to uh, uh, be able to put in uh, alternative water uh, resources to, uh, to service and provide redundancy to the current uh, uh, utility uh, whether it be the cities or the counties in this case. The board accepted a performance security bond for Blossom Groves Estates for about $273,000. Several long-term Polk County employees were recognized for their services Tuesday. They included Phyllis Boykin, who is a medical records supervisor in the Fire Rescue Division. She was recognized for 20 years of service. Tina Louise Rowland, who is a parks caretaker in the Parks and Natural Resources Division, was recognized for 20 years of service. Michelle A. Chris, who is a paramedic in the Fire Rescue Division, was recognized for 25 years of service. And Mark A. Glazier, who is a traffic control technician in the Roads and Drainage Division, Division was recognized for 35 years of service. In public hearings, during the afternoon session, the board held several public hearings on a variety of items. Those items up for consideration included Amendment 1 for the Joint Planning Area and Interlocal Agreement between the City of Auburndale and Polk County was approved by the board Tuesday. The board voted to vacate portions of platted and unmaintained rights-of-way and an alleyway as shown on the plat of Crosby's additional to Lowman. A resolution was approved Tuesday to vacate portions of platted and unmaintained rights-of-way and easements as shown on the map of Eaton's first addition to Eaton Park and W.F. Hallam and Company's map of the farming and trucking lands. The board also approved another resolution to vacate platted and unmaintained rights-of-way as shown on the map of Waverly. The board approved an ordinance that the county require criminal background checks for county employment relating to numerous positions. Well, that wraps up this edition of the board review. To keep current with programs and progress in the county, visit us online at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We encourage you to watch the next scheduled board meeting at 9 a.m. Tuesday, April 7th, 2020. I'm Tricia Pichette, and thank you for watching.